verse 21 through 31 chapter 15 of Matthew we're going to look at a Gentile woman's faith now this whole passage foreshadows the outgoing of the gospel to the whole world as well as faith of the Gentile world and um, Jesus knew his end was near uh, his withdrawal was deliberate, and he needed a quiet time to be with, with, with God, away from the crowds. And he needed to get his disciples away from the crowds as well to teach them without interruption uh, that was coming, to teach them what was coming, and because everywhere they went, they were recognized. So um, he led them north through, Ga through Galilee until they came to Gentile territory in um, Tyre and Sidon. So as long as they live, as long as they arrived, back up, as soon as they arrived, a Canaanite woman was wanting to help help them, but she wanted help for her demon-possessed daughter. She called Jesus the son of David. And Jesus kept walking. He didn't answer her. And this wasn't because he wasn't interested. It's because he knew his seeming silence would lead her faith to its height. And otherwise, it wouldn't have been realized if he just turned around and responded. So sometimes he acts that way with us, too. I mean, just to show us and others um, the links that our faith can reach, how far we can be stretched. Well, this woman's joy and faith would be far greater if he didn't immediately respond to her request. And so the disciples are becoming irritated with her and told Jesus this Gentile woman needed to stop bothering him and them. And Jesus stopped and he turned to speak to her. And his statement might have seemed harsh, but it was God's overruling purpose that the gospel should be first and it should be presented to the Jews and then through them to the world. It wasn't until after the cross and the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost that the Jews were equipped to give the gospel to the outside world. And the Gentiles weren't prepared to receive it yet. Now, Jesus had healed many, many Gentiles in the land of Israel, but he had to be careful outside the boundaries of Israel. And he didn't give the impression that he was abandoning the Jews and turning to the Gentiles. He just couldn't let them think that yet. Now, his heart was filled with compassion for this woman, and he would awaken within her an unshakable faith in him. And then he would grant her request. She worshiped him in verse 25. She fell down before him and she called him Lord. Already her urgent sense of need had quickened to a further step, step in her faith. Her approach was totally different now. The statement referring to dogs simply meant that she was an outsider. The Jews represent the children of God and the Gentile woman was the dog, the person that was outside the covenant family. Now, even here, Jesus used a word, Cunarian, or little dog, 
meaning household pet, instead of the Greek word for scavenger dogs. He was saying it's not fitting to deprive the Jews of help and then give it to the Gentiles outside Israel. Well, she humbly accepted her place and her place in the divine order at that time, but she also laid hold of the compassion of the master. And she says the master of the household would not refuse crumbs dropped from the table to the little dogs. It was as if she was saying, I know I am an ignorant outsider, but as God supplies food to all his creatures, please give me my part. Jesus was received with an unheard of faith and worshiped by an untaught outsider. And now she hears the greatest praise of Jesus. At first, he seemed to deny her, and he opens to her, he opens up the treasure of the house, his grace, and he bids her to take what she will. He says, your request is granted. There's a principle in that particular story for us, and it's that Jesus always responds to true faith in him. Jesus always responds to true faith in him. Jesus always responds to true faith in him.